It's Wednesday. It's three o'clock. Time for another mystery model on Monster Hobby's What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Welcome back to another mysterious Monster Hobbies What's in the Box unboxing. And today I picked out a beauty and I put it in this bag because a lot of you figured out what the car was really early in the video on last week's video. So this time I'm not taking any chances with early guessers. So as I did in the last video, remember if you figure out what's in this box, do not let the rest of the people know by writing, oh, it's a model of blah, blah, blah in the comments below. Let's keep this guy a mystery and let's not let anyone know until the final reveal at the end of the video. So if you know what the car is, just write the time that you figured it out. And I know in this video, I made a little mistake once in a while saying, let us know what the model is in the comments below. Don't listen to that part. We want to know what the time is that you figured it out. If you do write, oh, the model is blah, blah, I'm going to delete the comment because this is such a good trade secret and I want everyone to be in on the mystery. So if you write the car is blah, blah, it's getting deleted right away. But if you write, I know what the car is, I discovered it at however many seconds, a timestamp, that comment gets to stay. So without further ado, let us go down to our table and look at what's in the mystery box. Tonight's unboxing is going to be a real mystery for you for the first little bit. So we'll let's start with our first piece of the model, which is this clear piece of plastic. Now what could this be from? It's just a regular flat sheet of clear styrene, but oh, so mysterious. Next up, we have this piece, which includes the engine in three pieces so far. There's many pieces to this engine. These are the front suspension components. The springs would go in there. And of course we have a little firewall there or something similar to a firewall and this piece here which is also part of the motor do you guys know what it is yet if so write in the comments below next we carry along with the sprue and here we have a long piece which includes the frame both the left and the right hand side with some squares um, for cross braces, which are here. And there's some trophy stands going on, as well as a cross brace for the spring. And then of course, our cylinder heads. Next up, we have the tires. I'm gonna look at the these tires first. Okay, I gave it away a little. You have some big old 1960s style pie plate type of tires here, as well as some very narrow Dunlop motorcycle tires for the front of the car. So already we have a bit of an answer, but do you think you know what the car is? If so, please write the time you discovered it in the comments below. Now we're going to take a look at the chrome tree that's provided in this model kit and see if you know what it is so far. We have some very nice chrome here. We have the motorcycle style front wheels as well as the wheel backs for the larger tires. There's the hubcaps for those wheels. Here is the drum brake backings and the two spindles for the rear axles as well as the oil pan, transmission, valve covers, 
the uh, top of the engine, the valley cover. Then we've got the intake manifold, the bell housing. Here's another giveaway. The sword shifter. If you know what that car is, please let us know the time you're figuring this out. That's the back parts. And of course we have fan belts and exhaust pipes and a whole bunch of little springs and components down there. Then we have our exhaust and these. I forget the name of them. They're radius rods. That's what they are. And some of the headlight surrounds. I really hope you guys are scratching your heads over that. And now we have our next white tree. And here we have the radiator and a bunch of the trophy tops. So you know this car was entered in a real contest. The steering wheel and then our wheels again. And then we have, this was the plaque that came with the car. There's a decal for that. And then we get some of these supports for the ropes around the car. And then a plastic axle there, as well as the engine stand. You guys got any, any clue as to what this is? Well, stand by for the next parts. And now we have one of the telltale parts in your quest for knowledge. Here we have the bucket of this car. Let's see if you recognize it. I do believe, do believe it was produced in 1959 by an artist. Think you know what it is? Please let us know the time you figured it out in the comments below. As you can see, it is a nice body. Next up, we have the interior of that body, as well as the front clips. Of course, you can see that this is a fender headlight arrangement right there. And then we've got some nice detail on that interior, just like the real car, even includes seat belts. So if you think you know what this is, remember to let us know the time, but not the model. It is a surprise after all. And next up, we get into the beautiful instruction sheet. I would show you the decals, but they also give away what the car is. If you guys have been following up to this point and you still don't know, well, that's a good thing. So, I will tilt this up here. Here you can see the nice exploded view of the engine all going together. And then there's that intake manifold and the four chrome carburetors. Then we get down to here, where it shows putting on the valve covers. And as we move over this way, we have the transmission with that sword shifter in there. The saber gear shift, which is always cool. Then we get back into the second page, where it shows us the chassis assembly. And here you see that Model T style body going together. And the front coilover springs for the front axle. And of course our axle going together, and then our differential coming together, as well as the mountings of those shock absorbers. And then we just go into our next page. There's the rear axle getting put to the frame with the old Ford rear leaf spring to it. And then our exhaust going in there. Then we get into our wheels going together and going on the body, which is very Model T looking. Then we get into that front custom clip. And I do believe these headlights were from an AMC Rambler, if that's an indication to you. And then there's our interior going together with the clutch pedals, clutch and brake, as well as our firewall with the hydraulic unit pointing into the car, which is a little unusual. Then our steering wheel and our interior going together. And then we get into this side. Are you getting it at this point? We have those nice Cadillac tail lenses, or 58 Chevy tail lenses, I do believe. 
And then our body and engine going together all in the frame, as well as the interior. And then we get into cutting out the windshield pattern using that clear, clear plastic. And our car going together, and then the trophies, as well as the plaque, and the, what do they call these things? The stanchions going around the car. And then we get to the back end. And it just shows where the decals go. And if you haven't figured it out yet, it is the Ed Big Daddy Roth's Outlaw. So congratulations to those guys that found out what this was earlier in the video. And let's get into a little bit of history here. The Outlaw was the first of the Ed Big Daddy Roth's famous custom car creations. Quickly claiming the title of America's Wildest Hot Rod, this design has held its popularity throughout the years and is now a favorite custom oldie in the, on the show car scene. Built in 56, the Outlaw design originated from a drawing of one of Ed Ross' popular weirdo sweatshirts, a hopped-up Cadillac V8 engine with quad carburetors, a 48 Ford transmission, rear axles and brakes, a 37 Ford front axle and 54 Chevy coil springs were all combined and installed on the custom chassis. The pearlescent pinstripe body was filled with custom tuck and roll interior. And to top it all off, Roth added a Civil War sword as a gear shift lever. The outlaw began a new era of wild custom car designs and established Ed Roth as one of America's top custom car designers. And to wrap this up, we will now look at those awesome graphics the decals and this is why i couldn't show this before because it says ed the uh, champion show car the outlaw designed and built by ed roth but you can see the very nice very nice decals on there and these little guys they go on top of those coil springs in the front i really hope you enjoyed that examination of ed roth's outlaw on monster hobby's what's in the box and this is an older kit that I've had around in my secret stash in my basement at home. If you find it out there on eBay or whatever, you now know what's in the box and what's involved in building this kit. So I really do hope you enjoyed that video. And if you want to see some of our other great videos or just help us out there, visit us on Patreon. And when you become a Patreon member, one of the perks is that you get better videos. Imagine it like this. You've just seen this video of what's in the box. This video is like the video, okay? YouTube is like a DVD. You get some extra features and whatnot, and that's great. But for the extra, which is Patreon, you get the Blu-ray. So not only you get the video on both parts, but you get so many extra features when you become a member of our Monster Hobbies Patreon page. And one of the benefits is getting your name in the credits like these guys have. And there's more benefits too in our tiers. There's many different tiers, but the top tier, you get all the goodies of the other tiers as well as one of these kind of shirts. But you have to let us know what size you like. We have stickers and pencils and great, great things, as well as improved video content. So please come and support us on Patreon, as well as your continued support on YouTube. And I thank you all for being my patrons and YouTube supporters for all this time. And until next time, happy model building. And if you want to see some other cool what's in the box mystery stuff or regular stuff, check out these four videos here, here, here and back again over there. And until next time, happy model building.